that dictates that one must uh, carry out warfare against unbelievers until they either convert or submit. And this is the uh, justification that the terrorists around the world are using for what they're doing. And that justification is uh, based on core elements of Islamic tradition. That being the case, it's uh, very difficult for moderate Muslims, peaceful Muslims, to stand up within the Islamic community and to say, this is not part of Islam. They only do so out of conscious deception, intending to mislead Westerners in, the, in accord with the Islamic doctrine of taqiyya or religious deception, or they do so on the basis of simply being unaware of what Islam actually teaches. The Prophet said, War is deceit. Lying, generally speaking, is not allowed in, in Islam. But unlike other religions, there are certain situations where a Muslim can lie and that would be acceptable, even encouraged. This concept called al taqiyya al taqiyya means uh, prevention. So a Muslim is uh, allowed to, to lie to prevent harm that may come to him or to, to Islam. When one is under pressure, one may lie in order to protect the religion. This is taught in the Quran, chapter 3, verse 28, chapter 16, verse 106. There are certain uh, provisions for lying. So a Muslim can, can lie for the cause of Islam, can lie uh, to keep peace in his family so he can lie to his wife. Uh, a Muslim can lie to his fellow Muslim to keep peace in the society. Muhammad himself ordered people to lie. When people that he ordered to go and kill somebody, they told him, we cannot kill him unless we lie to that person. He said, okay, fine, lie. The apostle said, who will rid me of Ibn al-Ashraf? Muhammad bin Maslama, brother of the Bani Abdul Ashal, said, I will deal with him for you, O apostle of God. I will kill him. The apostle said, Do so if you can. He said, O apostle of God, we shall have to tell lies. The apostle answered, Say what you like, for you are free in the matter. America is a land of diversity and service. I'm an African American. My forefathers overcame the trials of slavery. I am Native American. I am a journalist, wife, and mother. I'm of European heritage. One of my ancestors was a member of the Continental Congress. I'm Hispanic American. I've been a Girl Scout since I was six years old, and now I'm a troop leader. I served in our nation's armed forces, as have many of my relatives. My father served two tours of duty in Vietnam. Another fought for freedom at Gettysburg. Two of my uncles fought for our country in the Korean War. And I am an American Muslim. And I am an American Muslim. And I am an American Muslim. I am an American Muslim. Muslims are part of the fabric of this great country and are working to build a better America. The spokesmen for Islam in the Western world know how to play the game. They know how to present their cause in the way that is not only regarded as acceptable by the societal mainstream, but also reasonable and even, one might say, just. They will appeal to uh, democratic institutions and uh, their human rights in the full knowledge that given the power to do so, they would abolish those institutions and deny those rights to others. The Prophet said, by Allah and Allah willing, if I take an oath and later find something else that is better than that, then I do what is better and expiate my oath. 
when I used to be uh, working as a translator at the Loop College in Chicago, uh, the uh, fundraising for jihad movements, for the PA, the PLO at that time, uh, we would do the translation for the announcements or the uh, flyers that we hand out or we put on the walls of the, of the, of the college. And I remember uh, the Arabic would be uh, basically the facts. Uh, bring your friends. We were intending to raise funds to support our, uh, uh, our jihad brothers in Lebanon, whether they're fighting in southern Lebanon against Israel or whatever. And then comes the English part. In the English part, it'd be the standard. Uh, we will be conducting a Middle Eastern cultural party. You're welcome. We will be serving lamb and baklava. So the West doesn't understand as when we get together as a group, our conversations are different. As soon as a Westerner would come into the scene, then the whole conversation changes. It becomes parable to a Western mind. When I used to go to work, let's say, during the Gulf War, I used to go to work at an American company, and everybody would be hovering around the TV set as soon as there's a Scud missile hitting Riyadh or something like that. And everybody will be uh, distraught, unhappy if a Scud lands in the American camp. And I will be standing there right amongst the American employees. Oh, that's too bad, you know. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry that, you know, we had loss of life. And <clears throat> out of frustration from having to keep uh, the truth of what I really felt, I would roll down the window on the freeway going home and scream as loud as I can, Allahu Akbar, Allah is great. Allahu Akbar, because this is the chantation you do when the enemy is killed, when you win. So if it was a victorious day for the Iraqis, when they land a Scud missile, it would be Allahu Akbar on the freeway. I know nobody could hear me now. And when I went to my apartment home, the rest of the apartment complex were also uh, uh, Arabs from the Middle East. We'd get together in my apartment, watch the uh, Gulf War, and uh, we'd be praising Allah every time there was some incident where Americans got killed. But it wasn't the same face that we put on when we were in an American environment. In an American environment, you played a different scenario. You acted as you are on their side. So there's this whole facade that is hidden from the Muslim, from the, from the West of how Muslim fundamentalists who want to propagate jihad in America can act publicly. Is what we are witnessing today a clash of civilizations? We ask that of noted Palestinian scholar and professor of English and comparative literature at Columbia University, Dr. Edward Said. No, I, I don't think so. And I think the whole thesis is a, is, a, is a bit of a false one. Because in the first place, civilizations are not, you know, little packages that's, uh, that are kind of completely detached from each other. They're all, they're all connected in one way or another. And, you know, wh so-called Western civilization has many elements of Islamic and Confucian and uh, Latin American and Russian, all the things that... The basis of uh, and um, profit of this new version of Islam as a religion of peace and tolerance was Edward Said, who established in all universities and in academia this Islamic vision of peace. On this basis, the whole history of dimitude and jihad disappeared. Edward Said, who in his book Orientalism posited that criticism of the Islamic world on the part of Westerners was racist and imperialist. It is spread in order to make political points, to accustom Westerners to the idea that Muslims are here to stay in the United States and that they must not be questioned in terms of their loyalty to the secular framework of Western society of the United States and of Europe as well, that they must not be questioned in this, despite Islam's historical political character, because Islam is a religion of peace. And this fiction has become so entrenched in American public discourse as to be practically beyond question, such that anybody who does question it is immediately branded as a racist, a hate monger, a bigot, 
And this is a very effective tool